I want to share with you how I go about playing chords and melodies at the same time on the guitar. For example, in the song Yesterday, like this. A little simple three note chord melody process and language that I devised for myself to be able to play any melody over any chords using the same familiar chord shapes over and over again and never losing the quality of the sound, the chords, the necessary harmonic function of everything that's happening in the music. And after having that simple three note system, we can expand into more of a solo guitar sound by adding roots of chords in the bass and other movements in between the melody lines. I'm gonna demonstrate this here. Let's go back a step and look at just the melody of yesterday. <laughs> We want to make sure we know the melody really well. So always a great thing to study first. Then we need to make sure whatever we're working with, we know the chords really well. In this case, G, F sharp minor, B7, E minor, E minor over D, C, D7, G, G over F sharp, E minor, A7, C, G. Okay, that's for that main section of yesterday. So of course, knowing the chords is great, knowing the melody is great, but to hear them at the same time, we have to be able to sing it or have someone else sing it or have someone else play the melody or we play the melody, someone else plays the chords. Maybe we use a looper pedal, maybe we record it, get into all the da recording stuff, or we work on arrangements to try to hear it all at once. And for years and years, I worked on arrangements where I was kind of reinventing the wheel every time. I was just like, okay, well this, what, how could I play this da, 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 over a G? And I would just think of what, is there a G chord shape that uses that da, da, da. And eventually I figured out, okay, well, all melodies come from scales and all chords uh, have scales that work over them that we can call modes or every melody is harmonized by different chords. There's got to be a way to turn this into something where I can find answers really quickly and I can still be creative with it after that, but I'm going to find, I want to find answers really quickly for just something that harmonically works. And this is really exciting what I came up with. I've been using it for a long time now and shared some of it on my YouTube channel. So for yesterday, we're going to do this three note block chord melody, just three notes at a time and play through this melody. And it goes. Now it's still mainly focused on the melody. We don't have those bass notes coming in. We're going to add them later, but I just love being able to hear the harmonic quality of things moving while I'm playing the melody at the same time. So anytime I have the root of a chord on the third string, I'm going to play as my default go-to answer. I can change it later, but I'm gonna play this physical shape on these three strings. Okay, so if C was the root of the chord and it was the melody, it was a C major chord and that's the melody, then this is my shape. It's not a root position shape, it's an inversion, but that's okay. You can do this with a bass player in the band or whatever. It just supports with this block chord type melody function. So that's really nice. And the root of every chord or the fifth of every chord can be replaced by the melody note. So we don't want to replace the three ever in triads. And if there's a seventh chord, we don't want to replace the three or seven. I'm just giving you an overview here and then giving you a demonstration of what it, what it looks like, how it sounds as we go through this. So G major shape. Three, five, one of G. And then this is the melody. Two, one, one, two, one, one. Okay, that works quite well. Then the chord goes to F sharp minor and the melody goes. Okay, well, I'm gonna get the one and the flat three of F sharp minor. Any time, I'm thinking of this melody right here as the fourth note away from the root of F sharp. And if I'm playing a minor chord, a minor triad, and the melody is the four, and I'm playing it on the second string, the melody on the second string, I'm gonna use this shape. Just sharing this, how the system works. So let's say I'm doing B minor triad and the melody is this. And I'm gonna, and I wanna play that on the second string. There's the shape I use. Because I get the flat three of the chord and I have the root of the chord and it fills it out quite nicely. Not that there aren't other options. I just want one I can get to so I can feel expressive and proficient at music and I can play with it later after that and get creative with it. So I haven't worked this out or memorized it. I'm just going through plugging in the answers that I like to use here. So, okay, that's all F sharp. 
Oh, this is B7, so they flow into each other really nicely. F sharp minor to B7. B7 is this, okay? Well, now the melody is the three. The flat seven is in the chord. You don't have to be tracking all of that. I just want to have this be an exposure uh, lesson for you. Because if you want to go really deep on this, I have uh, a great resource with a PDF and everything. You can go super deep on all the shapes at the end of the lesson. Okay, this is all B7. I love that. And then, okay, well, a lot of us as guitarists, we do think this way already. We just think this way with the things that we know. And it's the things we don't know. We think, oh, it seems so complicated. Well, it's just because we don't use it in that way yet. These top three strings are an E minor chord. I think that's pretty common to understand. Maybe we play this full E minor, but the top three strings are a complete E minor chord. So if I'm playing an E minor chord and the melody's the root, I'm gonna play this. And I can replace the root with the melody if the melody happens to be two, because the root doesn't need to stay there for the quality. Okay, so here's what we got. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's move on to a C chord. There's the melody right there. Well, this is the top three strings of a C chord that we usually think of. So already that's a hint that there are moments where we can fill out the arrangement, turn it into a more solo guitar arrangement with fuller bass sounds. But for now, I'm keeping the language simple. Complete C major chord with the third on top. Okay, this takes a long time to get something like this down, but when I work on systems like this, I'm getting down. I always call it the language of chord melody and the language of the fretboard or what you know, whatever, the language of music and theory. Because when I work on this, I know that I'm working on every song in the future that I ever want to do this with. So that's why I work on, okay, if the chord is C and the melody goes along the top string, what would it be? Okay, if the melody's here and it's a C chord, my this is the shape I would use. If the melody's here and it's a C chord, this is the shape I would use. The melody's this, which is the seven, that's the shape I would use. That's the shape I use for one. So I'm playing a scale through, uh, over the scale, thinking this is the shape I will use if I have to harmonize it anytime. So then when I go to a song like yesterday, okay, as long as I learn the melody and learn the chords, however, look them up, buy a book, whatever, then note for note, go through and say, ah, oh, yes, this works here, okay? Now it's still tricky because you could play that same shape here or this play it here you could play it here so you want to kind of choose what's easier for you to express yourself so this part's really cool goes to d7 it all just flows really nicely so same rules are applying here i'm on d7 the melody is here for a moment and I want to make sure that the three and the seven are in the chord because that is crucial for the quality of the chord. So that's my shape. The melody goes down to this note, so I'm going to play this shape just any time. If the melody is the seven along the third string and it's a dominant seven chord, I'm going to play this shape. That's what I've chosen to do. It's not better or worse than something else. I'm just working out how to plug something in quickly and be proficient with it. Just like you might learn, oh, if there's this chord, and if you're an improviser, then I can play this scale, it works over it. And there's a, you find a few that really work, or this position, or oh, the blues scale works over that chord, I'm gonna do it here. It's just like any of that. Just like any of that stuff. Uh, so let's fill this in more. Do the last of it here. Um, mm. Okay, so thinking about it a little bit because I just want to make sure the language is right, but it all clicks. Now, well, let's. We might as well do the next section. Okay, 
don't be overwhelmed. I want to demonstrate how cool it is and how how well it works because I have a have a resource, a bonus lesson, and a PDF you can download. Uh, there's a link in the description to get that, and I'll talk more about it in a second. You see what I'm talking about here. Uh, let's fill in. Let's just say, well, we do want to hear more of the lower notes. Well, we should be able to do that by taking the exact same language and just saying, hey, wherever you can, throw a root in the bass. So we got this, do, do, do. Okay, well, here's G. Do. That's lovely. Okay. Do, do, do. If you want that little bass note thing. I'll play that for a second, then I'll just jump to this. It goes to B7, so I'll go to this. Root in the bass. Much more filled out. E minor with low E. Works out. Do, do. Maybe move this. C in the bass. This is still, everything on the top is the same. Okay. Now for that moment, I ditched the bass thing because you don't need it constantly. You just put it in where you can. Um. It all kind of works out. Now I have these lower notes in there if I want to. So that's how I get creative with it. Like, oh, I can start moving bass notes around and it's very creative and very technical at the same time for the coordination involved and everything like that. Because what if I want to... try to keep the bass kind of steady that's its own skill and everything like that so lots of fun stuff you can do uh, after creating kind of a system and a language and I did the heavy lifting on that already and I just want to share it with you um, just to be complete let's do the B section of the song with the roots so we would do Uh, yeah. yeah. And cool chord there, A minor six. And then So a lot of possibilities after that. By the way, the recording of this is tuned down a whole step, but it's played as if it's in G on the recording anyway. So a lot of people will play it in G in standard tuning, uh, standard E tuning. So that is just a little share lesson that I wanted to give you because sometimes I think we have to get exposed to just the overall idea of, oh, someone's able to make that thing work and, it, and, and, and I see roughly in a big overview way what they're doing. And you, if you, follow this video, you could, of course, grab a couple chord shapes from it too and play around with that a little bit. But what I want to give you is a resource that I put together that is really cool. It's not on YouTube. It's my Chord Melody Masterclass three-part lesson series, and it's totally free. There's a link to it in the top of the description. You can sign up for that and go straight to the video. And on that page, there's a whole 25-minute video that breaks down how this works in terms of doing the, the real nitty gritty work, finding the chord quality, finding the chord inversions, step by step by step, then adding the scale to it. So you say, oh, anytime this chord is in a song and this and the melody is gonna come from a scale, so therefore we're mapping out every time what chord shape for any melody note that might come up over that chord type. And of course on the guitar, once we learn this in one key, we can move some of it around. So not only do I have the video that walks through all the exercises, I have an 11 page PDF you can download totally for free. And that's on that same page that's on my website, not on YouTube, and it's just up for a limited time. So if you're watching this video, when it comes out, this Chord Melody Masterclass uh, will be up for a couple weeks. So check it out if you're into that and at least just go grab the PDF and check out the shapes and just go through and every exercise is listed in order for you. Check out the video, how I demonstrate it on a very famous song that you will be familiar with. And that's what I wanted to do for this lesson since the Chord Melody Masterclass is open and I don't open it up very often. It's usually closed and uh, nowhere publicly. So right now it is up. Uh, check it out, link in the description. 
Thanks for watching. Leave a comment to let me know uh, if this video type of video was helpful. And uh, if you want more, you know where to go. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.